Hi, my name is Brianna Sims. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Cincinnati, and I was awarded the 2024 Pharma Foundation Faculty Starter Grant in Drug Delivery. My science origin story actually started when I was quite young. Um, I always wanted to be a scientist from like the beginning. Um, and my parents really tried to foster that kind of love for science and things of that nature. Um, I remember one particular time I wanted to be a paleontologist and we lived in Oklahoma. And it's very, very hot there for folks that don't know. Um, and my dad literally cemented like dinosaur bone, like toys into like a block of cement and had me out there with like little chisel and hammer. And I was just like, okay, maybe this is not the life for me. Um, but ultimately, I fell in love with chemistry. I started to love biochemistry when I got into college, learning about the chemistry of my hair, um, specifically black hair, went to an HBCU. And so that was a really special opportunity. And ever since then, I've been in love and have just kept it going ever since. So the research that was funded by the Pharma Foundation really is related to kind of public health. Um, before I get into like some of the nitty gritty details. Um, so I'm really interested in addressing problems that are impacting our communities, um, whether it's communities of color, our rural communities, um, those from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, people who don't have access to healthcare resources, really trying to take biomaterials from the bench top and actually moving them into the hands and the communities of the people that need them the most. And so the nanotechnology that we are developing is lipid nanoparticles. And so lipid nanoparticles is essentially just fancy soap bubbles, if you will. Um, but they were kind of used uh, predominantly or, or very prevalently in the COVID-19 vaccines. What my lab is trying to do is actually make these materials better by creating a synthetic lipid or a polymeric lipid material that can be better tuned for the specific application that we're trying to target. So for example, if you have a brain cancer, for example, um, the cell types that you have to get through in order to get to your brain are packed really, really, really tightly. So you want a particle that's maybe a little bit more squishy um, so it can squeeze between those cell types and actually get to that targeted location. And we can tune our nanoparticle very uh, kind of finely to get the exact properties we need. Drug delivery through the skin is one of the most challenging kind of pieces um, or the most challenging route of delivery just because you have like all these different layers of your skin. You of course have like the three primary layers of skin, but that topmost layer is all dead skin for the most part, unless you're really great at exfoliating your whole body. And <laughs> most of us are not. Um, and so it's really challenging to kind of get through that stratum corneum or that very most topmost layer because it is dead cells. You can think of it as like um, kind of this brick and mortar kind of uh, situation where you're trying to get through uh, cells or around cells rather that don't have any active machinery to uptake these things and to help it get to the parts of your body that you need. And so being able to use lipid nanoparticles for this and actually having a more rigid nanoparticle in this situation is actually more helpful to actually go between those cells so that you can get to where you're trying to go. So ultimately our goal is to be able to look at a specific disease or disorder and fine tune or hand select our lipid nanoparticle with the exact properties that we need to actually treat that specific disease or disorder. I find that we as scientists like to come up with the coolest thing that we can possibly make and then try to fit the application or find an application that fits that material. Um, but for my lab, we really try hard to think about the communities and the problems that are in the communities of people that we're trying to serve. And I personally come from um, a lot of different intersections of identities myself. And so thinking about kind of the challenges that people I know in everyday life have faced, you know, how can we take their problems and design a material that can fit a lot of these problems? As we think about kind of that public health lean that we're trying to take, thinking about people who maybe don't have access to their pharmacist all the time or their physician all the time to be able to get uh, repeat injections and things like that of therapeutics. So if they're at home, they can just rub a cream on, on their body and it actually gets to the targeted site that dramatically increases the amount of people that we're able to help. That also will help improve patient compliance and things like that um, with the therapeutic. 
and also decreases the cost. The materials that we're making, we're trying to keep those costs down um, significantly so that we can make sure that everybody can afford this type of health care. The Pharma Foundation and the funding from the Pharma Foundation has already impacted the work that we're doing. Um, I've been able to bring on an incredible student um, that might not have otherwise been able to do this work. Um, and we are making leaps and bounds in the development of these lipid nanoparticles. I don't see a lot of people that look like me in this field. Like, it means a lot to be able to be here and to do this work and to have a good time while doing it. And so I'm just really grateful that I was able to be awarded this type of funding so that not only am I impacting like the communities through the research, but like my students get to see me and see the work that we're doing. We have 11 students and all 11 students are underrepresented minorities in the field. And I mean, that wasn't on purpose. It just kind of happened. But having someone that comes from also these types of backgrounds as well is really helpful to opening doors for other people to see themselves in those spaces. And that's something that I'm really proud of and something that I was able to do because of this type of funding, because I was here at UC and things like that. If I could give any one piece of advice to any early career faculty, um, it would be kind of a, a two-parter. One, to trust yourself, trust that you know what you're doing. You are an expert, you got this. Um, so that's my little pep talk. And then the other piece is to remember to have fun. Um, I think that we can get bogged down in the science a lot and like in the weeds and being worried about the data or whether the data says what we want it to say or not. Um, but I think that the cool part about being a scholar, being an academic, being a researcher, and even being a Pharma Foundation awardee is that I have the privilege of being able to be a lifelong learner. And so really thinking about how I can continue to learn and have fun, and that's really why I became a part of this field, is because I want to continue to learn and continue to help out my community in, in ways that maybe aren't as obvious from the beginning. So I get to have a lot of fun. I love working with my students. They are a hoot and a half and then some. <laughs> and, you know, I if I didn't have fun, I wouldn't be able to do this job very well. So those are my two pieces of advice. <laughs>